to pay attention. Let's share some screen. And I'll go ahead and open that one. All right, so the new project. The new project is the Puzzle Cube project, which each of you will be actually uh, making both digitally and tangibly a Puzzle Cube. Okay. And we are going to make it uh, both in Inventor and actually going to build it out of small wooden cubes. But there are a few steps along the way, some criteria, some terminology, that sort of thing that we need to get to. Um, we're going to do as much as we can with it including learning about technical drawings, which drawing files are the, the, well, one or the other. We've only used two file types so far in Inventor. Um, we've only used part and assembly, but we're gonna use presentation files and drawing files, which uh, presentation files, I'll show you in a second, as soon as Active Inspire loads up which you are going to need um, one of the first steps is actually use this application for uh, drawing on the screen. You'll see how that works in a second. Uh, but behind the load up card, you can see this is a drawing file, which is sort of like a blueprint and you take an already existing part or assembly or presentation, an already existing file put it on there and put dimensions and any other sort of information that you need about that file uh, for the sake of communicating. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get out, get your worksheet. You just came in, you need one of those yellow worksheets and a writing utensil. And hopefully everything didn't just go kaput, close that. And, and one of these days it will work. And there we go. Let's put this over here. Okay, so uh, I'll explain how your worksheet works in a second, but go ahead and take notes along with me as I type things here, you don't have to write type here, but why can't I? Okay, so let's, uh, we'll call this constraints, which is both constraints, but it also sort of refers to our um, terminology because the thing that we are creating, the puzzle cube is, it's one puzzle cube. It's made up of several pieces and each piece is made up of uh, blocks. That's what you're actually gonna build them out of is wooden blocks, but the word the whole thing technically is a block when it's put together. Um, so we need to be clear about what words mean what. In this case, uh, in our constraints, uh, I can't get the cursor back. Is that going to give it to me? Nope. Oh, it is there. Okay. So, um, uh, Super awesome. There we go. Okay. So we have one puzzle cube. The entire thing is the puzzle cube. Okay. We're going to use that term for it. Hey, guys, put your phone away. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put, put it away. Are you joking? Uh, I wouldn't say that's a way. Like a way is like in a bag. 
Oh my God, I can't believe that. All right, so one puzzle cube. That is the whole thing. It is made up of five pieces. Okay, each, uh, your cube must be made up of exactly five, we're gonna call them pieces. Um, I mean, you could call them parts, but again, we need some uh, form of consistent terminology. And each, um, each piece, uh, is three, four, five, or six wooden blocks. Okay, so again, the, the wooden blocks are technically cubes, but we're not going to call them cubes, we're calling them the blocks blocks. Okay, and so if you have Come on now, why? If you have five pieces, oh, um, so 20, again, three, four, five, uh, 27 uh, wooden blocks in total, okay? And if you see what, it looks like, you'll see it's very clearly going to be 27 blocks. It is three by three by three of wooden blocks. Um, this assembly has, um, is made up of smaller blocks to make it look like actual blocks. A lot of you are gonna do assemblies where each of the pieces is one piece rather than a sub assembly. But regardless, the entire thing is going to be um, 27 wooden blocks. So if you have, give me a second here. If you have 27, uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. So if you have 27 blocks and five pieces, each piece is three, four, five, or six wooden blocks, how can you get up to 27 using three, four, five, or six, however many times? Any guesses? Okay, how about, how about uh, five, 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 six, six, that's 27, right? Okay, what's another combination, anybody? What do you got? Yes, four, five, and three sixes. Okay, how many combinations do you guys think there are? There are exactly three ways, very good. There are three ways to count to 20 or to sum up to 27 using four, five, and six. The only other way is three and the rest sixes. Okay, so you can go ahead and write this down. Okay, so you are going to choose one of these combinations. Now, as you go through and plan your, your cube, your entire plan, you are, you may need to change it, especially in the first stage, but there's no way to get around it. If you're gonna have five pieces with each piece um, being, Three, four, five, or six. That's your only uh, only possible way of doing it. Okay. Um, so some other constraints. 
Um, you need uh, five different colors, okay? Um, each, uh, the color will be five different colors. Um, gray uh, plus four others, okay? So the reason why I want one of you to be gray is because at any point when you are coloring them, uh, you can use a regular, regular pencil to make it gray, and you will be coloring them a couple different times, but um, there we go. There's 20% less usage on our color pencils right off the bat. And um, uh, colors will be um, file names, okay? Um, your the different parts you were like you need to keep them the same uh, the same color throughout the project otherwise it makes it way harder for me to to help you um, if uh, you need help it makes it a lot easier if the color on your first step of planning is the same as um, We'll call it persistent. That uh, will be the same as the file name as the color it is on the screen. Just is it persistent? Persistent. E or I? I mean, E or A. Yeah, it's definitely an E. All right. So, um, there's that. Okay, so other about the actual shapes, um, no rectangle slash square. And the last one is kind of difficult to explain without having a, um, without explaining how to build, but just go with it for now. Um, each level um, must interact interact with um, another. Okay, so just go with me with that. Go for it uh, on that one for now. It may make sense in a little bit. Okay, so this, you should have been writing this down uh, on your sheet right here. Um, your, your worksheet is two-sided because we're gonna write some stuff on the other side. Um, the sort of the plan, the order that we're going to do things, um, which is subject to change. Does anybody need this for another second before I get rid of it? All right. So go ahead and flip it over. And um, I don't know what we call this workflow, work order, uh, order of operations, about well, workflow. Okay. Uh, step one is going to be plan using Active Inspire. Okay. Active Inspire is this program here that I draw on the screen with, and um, it has its pros and cons. Um, most notably, it takes a long time to load up, but uh, you can find it in applications, and it's just usually like the second or third one, uh, Active Inspire, which is that one right there. Uh, double click, it takes a while to load up and don't, I just, I appreciate the enthusiasm, just the clicking is just actually just distracting to me, I appreciate it. And um, when you get there, I'll help you work your way through it. But if you click on the, uh, this button right here and your toolbar may be a little different because I think I've customized mine a little bit, you know, size and tools and whatever, but it allows you to, uh, draw on the screen and you guys are going to use the 
highlighter tool, this one right here of um, whatever size, and you're going to plan out your your cube on this sheet. Now, I don't mean your paper sheet. I mean, you literally are going to go to the spreadsheet, the class uh, calendar spreadsheet, and this document here, Puzzle Cube Planning, is the PDF of this document of the three by three cube, uh, the exploded view, and you're gonna use the Active Inspire highlighter to plan out where your different pieces are gonna go to make sure that they work. Okay, um, I guess, hold on a second, let's, um, let's go back to, you have one more, Wow, that's as much as I can get back. Um, one more rule at the bottom of the constraints thing. I know you have other things there, but it seems to have uh, forgotten them. Um, at the bottom there where you have like uh, no squares, rectangles, colors persistent, um, blocks, wooden blocks must be connected by faces. Okay, these are actual, well, we're planning to build a thing out of actual wood and glue. And the wooden blocks, each wooden block of a piece needs to be connected to another wooden block of that piece by a face. Otherwise, the glue doesn't work. And you can't glue corners and you can't jump, jump uh, from side to side. But um, let's, I'll show you how this worksheet works. Okay, so you can see how this right here is our puzzle cube, five different pieces. And you can see how it goes together with uh, the animation. I guess this is it animating apart. But okay, so it's made up of three different pieces. When it's done, it kind of looks like a Rubik's cube as far as uh, dimensions go. Obviously, it's not a Rubik's cube at all. But the worksheet that you have is still connected. Or it's still connected. The worksheet that you have is uh, an exploded view. So you can see how how the piece actually looks here. But the exploded view is designed so that you can see all 27 blocks at the same time, even though like this block right here isn't touching, this middle green block isn't touching the other green blocks on the page or on the screen here, but you do know that this block here connects to this block because it's directly above it. And the same thing there directly above it. So that works, okay? Um, when this, this first step is, I mean, super critical in that if it's not, if you do something wrong at this stage, you really can't go forward. Uh, I mean, I'll double check it and it's not a huge consequence if you don't get it the first time and we'll just fix it. But it, it really is the, the first step. <laughs> So the way, okay, so we have each piece, three, four, five, or six blocks. We need five of them. So we're gonna need one of those combinations of, which is on here, of either uh, three fives and two sixes, or four, five, and three sixes, or a three and four sixes. And it doesn't really matter. And as you go, you'll probably change your idea or change your plan. But let's just go ahead and build one. I'll show you how easy it is. Once you understand what's going on, you could build one in like two seconds. Um, but the key is understanding that, so this block right here could be connected to this block because it's directly above it. 
but you can't connect. Okay, those two blocks can't be part of the same piece uh, directly. Obviously, if you had this one right here, you could, and that would be a good three block piece right there. That's just sort of like a regular short L um, shape. There's three blocks right there. And, um, you know, this is a four block piece, but the problem is this four blocks right here makes a square, and that's one of the no nos. Um, same thing with rectangles. This is a rectangle. This red piece right here is, you know, two by three. Can't have a, a rectangle like that. Could have um, there, there, that is a, uh, you know, a square plus one shape, two, two, and one. It kind of looks like that. Uh, just a, a quick side note there is a tendency amongst some individuals to try and make things as complicated as possible. Like they have, uh, it's the challenge to see if they can design a puzzle that's too hard for other people to solve, like they win or something. Um, that's fine. But it is possible to make a puzzle that is super difficult to solve, at which point, I mean, if that's your goal, that's you're not being graded on how difficult it is to solve. Um, if you want to make something relatively simple, um, you can. Um, oh, new rule. I'm coming across rules as I think of them. Um, another one at the bottom um, after a rectangle or whatever is. Um, uh, no three pieces uh, identical. Um, it is very easy to get into a situation where like you make three of the same pieces that just sort of line up and that just becomes ridiculous. Um, it is, it makes it way more difficult if I say none of the pieces can be identical, but if you have two of the pieces, two of your five pieces are the same piece, um, that's, that's fine. Um, you'll see as you start getting going how easy it is to build something where like you accidentally make three of your five pieces identical. <laughs> All right, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. And the point of doing this with Active Inspire and the highlighter digitally is so that you can make quick changes really easy. Um, you'll see as you, hey, uh, just hang off on. I, I really appreciate the sentiment, you know, thumbs up, but just, uh, like you just the clicking just draws my attention. Just, you'll have plenty of time, trust me. Um, so I'll just jump right in and build one. Let's start with my first piece will be red. Um, let's build a, um, uh, there's three, let's say I'll make this one uh, a five block piece. There's three and um, I couldn't have this as a, even though there's a three block is possible, three in a straight line is just a, a rectangle. So that doesn't work. Let's just make this, uh, there we go. There's a five block piece, it's kind of messy, but um, let me see if I can do it a little neater. Five block piece. And let me pick new color. Um, let's go another um, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, four, uh, five. And six, that's fine. Even though this one in the front of the second level kind of sticks out, it connects to this one with a face and that one connects to this one with a face, so it's fine. Okay, so there you go. I have a five and a six. That means I'm doing one of the other, one of the first two combinations. Let's pick a new color, how about gray? And I do one, two, three, four, 
Uh, five, how many is that? That's five and six. And in fact, I'm gonna intentionally do something incorrect. Give me a second. Um, let's pretend that I made this one. Do you need something? I do not. Okay. So let's say I made this red one here six. And I made this green one here a six. Black one here is six, which is fine. Oh, wait, is it? Yeah. Um, so that means I have a five and a four remaining. The problem is, so I can make completely legitimate uh, five and a four. So there's a four, uh, a yellow four, one, two, three, four, and uh, any new color of a blue and a five. The problem with this one is this breaks the rule of each layer must interact with another layer. And you can tell that, okay, imagine these wooden blocks, imagine these made out of wooden blocks. If you put these together, this top layer would just sort of like slide off. It wouldn't interlock when you actually put it together. It just wouldn't, it doesn't work. Okay, so an easy fix is just to trade one from one level to another. So how about um, we can just add a blue to here and it still works. Let's that make this one blue. So this blue one connects to the next level and because it connects to that level, um, like the actual block will interlock and it will work better. All right. Um, some of you will get this concept right away. And some of you will not, but that's fine. Um, so the first step is, let's see how far can we get back to, um, uh, let's just go here. Okay, so we had, um, Workflow. Um, plan with active. I don't think there's an E in active inspire. Um, plan with active expire. Get approved. Uh, color on yellow worksheets. <coughs> Uh, uh, and should we make hand in? Uh, well, I guess hand in isn't technically a step in our circumstance. Um, how about then uh, model arts in inventor um, assembly in inventor. Presentation in Inventor drawing files in Inventor uh, build uh, with wood and blue. Okay, so those are the steps. Uh, each step is not the same amount of time. Um, so there's that. Okay, any questions about this? Obviously, we're gonna do a lot of step by a lot of explanations along the way with examples, but the key is your first step is to come up with a good plan. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on sort of hang out for a second, just hang out, hold on, plenty of time, relax. Um, doing examples of feasible plans, I'll help you make good decisions and uh, come up with realistic designs that are of a, an appropriate difficulty. 
but the key is that you're going into your school menu, which is probably here, open school menu. And then you're going to, this is the first thing you do. In fact, go ahead and do this now. Go ahead and open up your um, open school menu, go to applications. We're not in Inventor today. We're just going to applications and you're opening up Active Inspire, which is this application right here. It takes a minute to open up. And while you're doing that, you can go to the um, classroom, not classroom, what's it called? Calendar spreadsheet thing in uh, however you get there and open up the digital version of the worksheet that you're holding, which is here. And you're going to use the highlighter and five different colors to plan out your design. Once you get it done, you can then, once you, excuse me, once you get it approved, you can then take color pencils and recreate it on your yellow worksheet. I don't think you're gonna run out of time by the end of class, but if you do run out of time, uh, you could take a screen grab or just take a picture of the screen to save your work and get back to it next time. Uh, but other than that, um, you can go ahead and get started. The key, if you're, you can't see your desktop, there's this button right here. The, uh, it's like an orange circle desktop annotate, and that allows you to use the uh, tools on anything uh, that's on your desktop. All right, so that's where I'm going to end the meeting so that we can put that recording up.